Hey everybody, what is going on? Hexalex here. Got another Master Duel video for you, and this is one that I feel like has been a long time coming. Uh, I'm actually kind of surprised I haven't recorded a video about this deck sooner. Uh, this has just kind of always been one of those decks that's always been on my radar, um, but I've always been just too busy to commit enough time to... Uh, uh, to go full on on learning and building it, but um, honestly, with this month's selection pack, you know, there's not really too much beyond Ice Barrier that like super interested me, um, including Voiceless Voice. So, decided to go ahead and move on to some Synchro decks. I want to do a lot of Synchro summoning this month, and we're going to be starting with the classic Adventure of Synchro. Now, uh, I do got to throw kind of a big asterisk over this video in that I am. Very much still learning this deck, and this is kind of shaping up to be, I think, one of the more complex decks I've ever uh, tried to learn here on Master Duel. Um, this is even the bare bones version, uh, 40 cards instead of the typical 60 cards, and really running the basics of the Adventure Synchron package. Uh, that, and I'm, again, I'm still having <laughs> uh, quite a bit of trouble uh, sometimes trying to remember or really figure out how to combo. Uh, combo guides for this deck are kind of hard to come by, uh, something that I, I kind of want to remedy uh, once I get better with this deck, but at the same time it's also understandable because this is a very free-form combo deck, right? There are lots of different ways to arrive at the same end board, um, and what you're able to go into does often depend on what you include in your deck. So again, with a bare bones 40 card version, uh, there's only so much we can do, that's why the 60 card builds in this deck tend to be better. I just wanted to start off with something simple, that way I could get a basic handle on junk speeder lines before I started exploring uh, some more complex builds. So, this build I wouldn't necessarily say is optimal, and the combo lines I'm going to show you are probably not necessarily uh, optimal, but um, again, I feel like this build was a pretty good jumping off point, and I will show you before we start the games the kind of typical turn one combo line that I've been doing. Um, so. As far as the build here goes, uh, the idea is pretty simple if you've played against a deck like this, which most of us probably have at least once, and you probably know that the aim here is to use the effect of Junk Speed, excuse me, Junk Speeder to summon out as many tokens as possible from our deck. We do, of course, also need some non-tuner bodies. I say tokens, I meant tuners. Uh, we do also need some non-tuner bodies to go with those, so uh, in that vein, we have the Adventure Engine which offers the level four adventure token, as well as level seven wandering griffin rider. There is also the reborn Tengu engine here, which you could potentially use, but I don't really find myself comboing much with this because uh, really in order to get the most out of reborn, well, in order to combo period with reborn Tengu, right? You're gonna have to normal summon it. And we actually usually use our normal summon for jet synchron. So the only way you can really combo with jet synchron plus reborn Tengu uh, is if you start with Diabelle Star of the Black Witch. Uh, which can, of course, special summon out the Jet Synchron with original Sinful Spoils. Um, if I was leaning more into the Reborn Tengu stuff, I'd probably also include Poplars and Bonfire, or a Poplar and a couple of Bonfires. Those Bonfires being extra ways to get to our Jet Synchron uh, without having to commit our normal summon. Again, that's something I'd probably do in like a 60 card build, but I might not necessarily even include Reborn Tengu in the future. Um, if I was playing this Bare Bones deck, I think. I probably would, well, if I was playing it more, I mean, um, which I might still, I would probably take out the Reborn Tengus for small worlds, just to have more ways to go into the Adventure Engine and find the Water Enchantress, because I do think that is the more consistent way to set up, so. Uh, but Reborn Tengu definitely still does have a place in this build. Um, honestly, the main reason that I, I went out of my way to build this is that I did manage to pull an Alt Art Stardust Dragon from the uh, new secret pack there. I was very excited about that. Of course, you know me, I love Synchro Summoning, but uh, Stardust Dragon is definitely, I think, one of my favorite Synchro monsters. I uh, have a huge amount of nostalgia for 5D's era. Yusei Fudo is my favorite Yu-Gi-Oh character, probably, period. Um, so was very, very satisfied to pull the Alt Art Stardust, and I even got an Alt Art Tuning on the way. I wasn't trying to pull for these, but I did pull one. Of course, now I have the temptation to try to pull two more, but now I'm going to save my gems for the time being and just uh, be satisfied with what I've got here. So, uh, as far as the Synchrons themselves, we're on two of each of Stardust, Revolution, and Jet Synchron, as well as just one copy of Assault Synchron. So, 
Uh, again, this is the ratio that I chose for the kind of 40 card basic version of the deck. Uh, two of each of them, because of course we do want to be pulling all of these tuners out of the deck with the junk speeders. So if you open one of them, we, we actually do want to open a Jet Synchron to get our play started. But with this, if you open a Rev or a Starter Synchron, it's fine. You'll still have more to pull out from the deck, right? Uh, Assault Synchron. Even if you open this, it's fine because you can still special it from your hand and then you're pretty much like good to go for your combo line. It's effectively the same as if you'd summon it out off Junk Speeder. So uh, we're only on one Assault Synchron because it doesn't actually really matter if you open this. You can just special it from your hand by its own effect and then combo as normal. The one of Junk Servant might look a little bit weird, um, but the reason that we play this is actually because it can be searched off of Jet Synchron. Really easy to forget that Jet Synchron on top of being a pretty broken tuner with the ability to revive itself does also have a search effect, uh, which most builds can't really take advantage of. But here, we're simply grabbing the Junk Servant to have another level 4 non-tuner body. It's going to be pretty important for us to have uh, as many of these non-tuner bodies as we can get access to. So. Uh, pretty much everything in here, every card in here, does have a, a role. Like all these weird one ofs, like Stardust Illumination and Trail and Synchro Rumble, uh, are all definitely going to be used as part of our turn one combo line in order to build our board. Now, what is the objective of a deck like this, you might wonder? Well, actually, our end board here is aiming to hand rip our opponent on turn one, not one, not two, but three times. And not only are we going to hand rip our opponent three times, we're going to set up multiple Omni Negates as well as a Monster Negate and also a Board Wipe. So even if the opponent does manage to come back off of their three cards, because we'll, they'll start with five, we'll rip three, they'll go to another two, and then draw one for a turn. Even if the opponent does have plays in their three card hand, uh, we have far more than enough disruption to stop it as part of our end board. So... Um, yeah, I think, again, before I do the replays, I'll kind of show you the combo line that I've been doing. I'm not going to proclaim that it's optimal or anything, but just to give you an idea of how the deck typically plays out. But before that, let's break down this list card by card real quick. So for this, again, bare bones build, which I do think is good to start off with, but I definitely want to expand on very much so in the future. Uh, we are on two Jet Synchron, three Max C, one Assault Synchron, three Ash Blossom and Joy Spring, two Water Enchantress of the Temple, two Revolution Synchron, one Junk Servant, three Reborn Tengu, two Stardust Synchron, one Stardust Trail, one Wandering Griffin Rider, three Diabelle Star of the Black Witch, one Nibiru the Primal Being, one Foolish Burial, three Tuning, including the altar there, <laughs> uh, one Stardust Illumination, three Rite of Armisir, one Original Sinful Spoils, one Secret Rumble, one Drake Aback the Rideable Dragon, one Fateful Adventure, two Called by the Grave, and then finally one Wanted Seeker of Sinful Spoils. That's going to do it for our 40 card main deck for the extra deck. We're on one Herald of the Arclight, one TG Hyper Librarian, one Excel Synchron, one Junk Speeder, one Stardust Charge Warrior, one Black Rose Dragon, one Stardust Dragon, one Cypher and Lord Omega, one Excel Synchro Stardust Dragon, one Trishula Dragon of the Ice Barrier, one Ravenous Crocker Dragon Arctheus, one Majestic Star Dragon, one Baron de Fleur, one Bestial Dispater, and then one Crimson Dragon. So let's go ahead and take a look now at the uh, combo line. Okay, so we're starting up here with our turn one combo line, opening with Tuning and Water Enchantress. Basically, you just need access to Jet Synchron plus Rite of Armasir in order to be able to do the combo line. So, um, we've got the Rite of Armasir, grabbing that off the Water Enchantress, so we're going to lead by summoning the Adventure token. Uh, and then we can throw the Fateful Adventure down. After that, I'm going to use my Tuning to search up the Jet Synchron. Of course, we want to make sure the Rite is, uh, or the Fateful Adventure is on the field before we normal summon Jet Synchron. Uh, now from there, we are going to do the normal summon, and then we get the Fateful Adventure effect. Grabbing the Draco back here. Uh, we're not going to equip it, of course. We're going to want to add it. And, you know, normally I would search up the Wandering Griffin Rider, but, um, you know, we already have it in our opening hand, as you can see here. Uh, so in that case, I guess I'll just use this effect to grab Water Enchantress. But, uh, again, normally you would activate this to pitch the, the Drake, excuse me, the Draco back and then add Griffin Rider. Uh, we'll equip the Draco back here. It doesn't really matter because we're about to synchro with the token anyway. Now, one thing that you could do, um, and something I've actually been trying to figure out with this build, is at this stage right here, you could actually go for Excel Stardust if you wanted to, and then make the Junk Speeder unaffected by making it with Excel Stardust effect. Um, but I haven't been able to figure out a line that works with this particular build. So instead, I'll just make it the old-fashioned way. We're going to chain block the Junk Speeder effect with the Jet Synchron effect again to search a Junk Monster, right? So 
Uh, this will protect the Junk Speeder from Ash Blossom, but it is still vulnerable to Valor and Imperm. Uh, again, I know that there is a line where you can uh, make the Excel Synchro first, and then bring back Jet Synchron with its effect, then use the other effect in order to make uh, Junk Speeder, and then it will be unaffected. But uh, although you could do that here, I think with this build, you don't have the right non tuner to be able to execute a combo line. So. When Stardust is special summoned, we grab the Stardust Illumination. Uh, now from here, we need to make some room on our board. So I'm going to start by actually making the Barrel and the Fleur. I like having the Omni up as soon as possible. Of course, we would still have gotten nibbed here already, but... Better to make it as soon as you can, I think. Now, we definitely want to special the Junk Servant while Junk Speeder's on the field, because I have to have a Junk Monster in play in order to special it. So we're going to throw that down now, even though we won't use it for a little bit here. Uh, again, I want to make more room, so I'm going to go for the Stardust Charge Warrior. Uh, it's very important in this deck to, whenever possible, Synchro Summon into the extra monster zone to make sure that your main zones are free, right? Um, because we don't have any Link monsters in this extra deck at all, so you can't mess yourself up that way. Now I'm going to use Assault Synchron and the newly summoned Stardust Charge Warrior for Excel Synchro Stardust. Uh, Excel Synchro Stardust is going to use its effect in order to bring back the Jet Synchron. Now, while we have the Excel Stardust on the field, because I have to have a Synchro Monster that mentions Stardust uh, in order to Special Summon, now we want to use Stardust Illumination. Don't use it without Stardust or Excel on the field, because then you'll just mill the trail instead of summoning it, right? So, we'll summon that right over here. Now, I specifically want to Synchro with the trail, because it has this effect to bring itself back from the graveyard that we're going to use in a little bit. So, I'm going to use Trail and Jet Synchron in order to make the TG Hyper Librarian. That way we can get a few draws in here. Alright, now from there, I'm actually going to go ahead and activate the Excel Synchro Stardust effect to tribute itself uh, and bring out the Stardust Dragon. Then I will Synchro my Stardust Synchron and Stardust Dragon into Crimson Dragon. Uh, we're doing it this way uh, because instead of just going for you know a regular Synchro with Excel plus um, Stardust Synchron, because by tributing, we actually proc multiple graveyard effects, as well as getting multiple draws of Hyper Librarian. Yeah, as you can see, we proc both the Trail effect. Uh, this will allow it to bring itself back. And then we also have the Assault Synchron effect here, which will bring back the Excel Synchro Stardust Dragon. Alright, so we'll banish that, bring back the Excel. Like I said, Stardust Trail is going to be able to special summon itself this way, so... Alright, and then of course we get the draws off the Hyper Librarian as well. Lots of draws we're going to get here. Um, now, normally when you summon Crimson Dragon, you would want to add the Rumble, but we already had it in hand. That's why I didn't add it. I wanted to just point that out real quick. So now I'm actually going to tribute that Excel Stardust here. Oh yeah, um, this is actually post-commentated, but I think here I was trying to remember exactly what to tribute, but no. Like, because you would think you'd want to tribute a 4, because we have to make Crimson Dragon again, but we're going to make Crimson Dragon another way. We're going to tribute the Excel Stardust to bring back Stardust Synchron. Now we're going to make our Cypher Lord Omega using Stardust Synchron and Junk Servant. And we're going to begin the process of hand ripping. So we, of course, get another draw off the Hyper Librarian. Uh, we're now going to use the Omega effect to banish itself to also banish a card from the opponent's hand. Uh, now we can use the Crimson Dragon effect, targeting the Baron de Fleur to summon a Dragon level 10 Synchro. Uh, we're going to want to grab the Bestial Dissipator. And again, we get a draw off Hyper Librarian. Now we get to use the Bestial Dissipator in order to bring back our Cyframe Lord Omega. And we'll once again use Omega to rip our second of three cards. Alright, now it's time to rip the third. We're going to make Trishula by bringing back the Revolution Synchron as a level 1 tuner. And we can also use the Graveyard Effect of Stardust Illumination to adjust the level of our trail down to 3. So now we have 1 plus 3 plus 5. Uh, that is going to end up equaling 9. Yeah, boom, boom, boom. There's the Trishula. Gonna banish the third card from our opponent's hand. We also banish with all these hand drops, which is really nice. And finally, we're gonna use Synchro Rumble in order to bring back the Revolution Synchro that's in our graveyard. And then now we can do 3 plus 9 for 12, makes our second Crimson Dragon summon. So, the reason that we summon out Crimson Dragon again is to actually, on the opponent's turn, uh, then go for uh, one of our Omni Negates. So now they only have two cards left in hand. 
We have two negates on the board already, Baron and Dissipator, and as I was just mentioning, Crimson Dragon, we can use with one of these tens in order to bring out the Majestic Star Dragon, which has not only an Omni Negate effect on its first effect, but also a board wipe as well. And there you go, that's pretty much how I've been doing the main turn one combo line, but again, I think it could be done at least a little more optimally. So, uh, anyway, let's go ahead and watch some duels here. Okay, so our first game, uh, I'm just going to show you a quick one turn game um, against, I think this is like a tier limit build or something? I'm actually trying to remember, I should have clicked on the deck beforehand, but uh, basically I'll show you how we're going to do our combo line, get interrupted, and then still be able to go off anyway. So as you can see here, we've definitely opened Jet Synchron and quite a number of adventure stuff to get our plays going. I'm going to, as with the example, lead with the Rite of Arm Seer uh, for the... Um, token and then the Griffin Rider, get to normal some of the Jet Synchron, and then we'll go for the aforementioned Junk Speeder. Alright, so Junk Speeder F activating here, chain blocking it with the Jet Synchron, but as I mentioned before, that unfortunately does not protect against infinite impermanence. So, we are going to get negated here, certainly not ideal, but we're not necessarily done. We do still get the Junk Servant, uh, as well as we can use the... Um, the effect of the, uh, what is it called, bleh, uh, Junk Speeder, or Jet Synchron, that one, jeez. <laughs> uh, so actually, I'm glad I went for the Water Enchantress effect here, because we did actually manage to beat out a Gamma, right? So, my plan was to revive with Jet Synchron, um, and then maybe, like, go for an 8, or a 5, or possibly even, uh, a 10, with, like, 5 plus 4 plus 1, but I'm actually very glad that I just decided to randomly use the Water Enchantress effect first, as we can see that baited out, but not only did it bait out more disruption in the form of Gamma, but now I have a draw off of Maxi, and I do actually have a draw that could, you know, let me continue to combo off here, and in true Heart of the Cards fashion, I do, in fact, peel the one card I need, which is Revolution Synchron, in order to be able to continue play, so... I'm going to sync the Rev Synchron in hand with the Junk Speeder on the field uh, to bring out my Excel Synchro Stardust. Now, from here, I can use the Excel Synchro Stardust F to bring back the Jet Synchron. I just realized, too, I forgot to summon Junk Servant. Oops. <laughs> so, actually, I could have had another level 4 non-tuner on the field, but I don't even think we're going to need it, if I remember right here. So, because we have Excel Stardust out, I can use Illumination for Trail. After bringing out the Stardust Synchron. Now we're going for Excel Synchron. I actually meant to touch on this in like the combo I showed, but uh, we didn't actually end up using Excel Synchron. So for the combo line I showed, uh, you don't actually need Croca Dragon, Black Rose Dragon, Herald of the Arc Light. Um, and again, we did not actually use Excel in kind of our main combo line, but even if we're not using Excel for the main combo line, I do like it for situations like this where you can potentially like come back, right? And because we actually use the Stardust Trail to make a Synchron monster, uh, it leaves behind a level 1 token. Uh, again, the combo line I showed uh, doesn't really make use of this effect, but that's why I'm saying, like, it's so harder to show combo lines of this deck, because there's so many different ways to go about it. Like, this is still going to end up being pretty much a full combo here, right? I'm going to distribute off the Excel for the Stardust Dragon here, uh, and then I'll use the 4 plus the 8 to go into our Crimson Dragon. Throwing that in the EMZ, Crimson Dragon F's going to bring back the Synchro Rumble, and then Trail gets to summon itself, uh, because our monster was tributed. Alright, so there's the Rumble. Alright, Stardust Illumination, I'm going to do some level adjusting here. I'm going to adjust down the Stardust Trail. Uh, in order to go into a level 10, this will be our Baron de Fleur. Now we'll use the Crimson Dragon on the Baron de Fleur, bringing out our Bestial Dissipator. From here I can Synchro Rumble and bring back the Jet Synchron, and then yeah, our opponent's going to concede here, because uh, we can already pull off the Double Hand Rip here. It's not quite a full, full combo, although again, it actually might have been if I just remembered to summon that Junk Servant. Um, that's another thing that can kind of be tricky about playing this deck sometimes, just making sure that you're sequencing everything in the right order. You have to summon Junk Servant while Junk Speeder is still on the field. You have to use Stardust Illumination while the Stardust Dragon uh, or Excel Stardust is on the field, uh, etc., etc. So, um, but yeah, I just wanted to show, because I want to show this game, even though I don't typically show just one-turn duels where the opponent concedes on my first turn, because... 
It's really easy to look at a deck like this and be like, oh, that can't play through Disruption. But here, our opponent had Imperm and Gamma and used both, and we were still able to uh, hand rip them and end on multiple negates. Multiple hand rips and multiple negates through multiple hand traps, uh, just to show how versatile this deck can be. So let's take a look at some more games here. Okay, so for this game, we're going to be up against Horus Eldlich, which is a deck I've encountered at least a couple of times before, but... Um, I mean, it's a pretty... It makes sense, right? You know, the horse... I mean, the Elder Chef wants to be in the graveyard and pretty easy to combine with something like the Horus Engine. So, uh, so here I actually don't have access to the Adventure Engine, but I do have access to the DML. So, the way that I see it, as long as you have, like, one good non-tuner, that's really the most important thing to have in a build like this. Uh, here it's going to get Impermed, which is actually completely fine because I really don't need the uh the jet synchron that badly here um indeed i wouldn't want to sack off the diabelle for her or for the jet synchron because there go my non-tuner right so i'm just gonna make baron pass here baron nash boss and pass into five cards not like the most ideal but it'll work all right here's the eldritch uh targeting the baron which i'm obviously gonna have to negate right so sitting off a solemn judgment alongside that uh, now here, the next play is going to be the Imseti, pitching the Dumatav. Thankfully, we do have that Ash Blossom, so it actually looks like my two negates here are going to probably end up being enough. Um, in fact, I think that ends up, yeah, pretty much being the return right there. So, yeah, it would be very, it would have been very easy for this hand to have been very good. It kind of makes me wonder what their last card is if they pitched Solemn Judgment, uh, but they didn't play their last card. It kind of makes me think it might be a hand trap. Uh, maybe like a Nibiru. Well, I mean, a Nibiru. Well, I feel like if it was anything but Nibiru, they probably would have used that on my turn, right? So. Alright, drawing for a turn. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually put the Baron back in my extra deck and then go for the Diabell Star. I think I would do this either way, um, but the tuning that I drew here actually definitely makes me want to do this because what I can do here is just activate tuning. Uh, the opponent does have a hand trap as their last card. It's going to be Ash Blossom. So. Also, don't know why I summoned this Diabell in defense. It definitely should have been in attack mode. Because obviously we can attack now, but uh, I'm going to use Jet Synchron to pitch the Excel Synch or the Assault Synchron in my hand, right? So now we can go for a Synchro Eight. That's going to be the Excel Synchro Stardust Dragon. Uh, now Excel Synchro Stardust can bring out that Assault Synchron that we just pitched, and two plus eight is ten. I'm just going to make the Baron de Flare again. So. As you can see, a lot of the time, even if you're not able to establish like a full huge combo, you don't always need that to win. Sometimes it really does come down to like trading your resources with your opponent's disruption and then doing vice versa on your opponent's turn, trading your disruption against their resources. And in a game state like this, even if you can't fully big combo off, you know, as long as you have good solid resource management, that's going to be far more than enough to keep you in the game, right? So gonna battle swing in here now our opponent's in top deck mode not only facing down the baron de fleur but i've also got the wanted set as well uh yeah they're just gonna concede here because again they're in top deck mode against an omni but again aside from that i also have the wanted meaning i can grab another diabelle star meaning that will pretty much guarantee i have more bodies to be able to swing in for lethal right because they're at 5k and then i can just add diabelle pitch whatever i draw for turn next turn special diabelle and then attack directly for game so that's also why i grabbed wanted instead of the original sinful spoils uh because we were definitely in a game state there where more diabelle stars would help far more than just simply access to jet synchron so um so yeah i mean that's another thing that's important to keep in mind like a lot of people will just straight up concede when they're playing a big combo deck if they can't get a big combo off but you don't always need to do that to win so uh we got one more game we're gonna take a look at before we finish off here and our final opponent is going to be on, it's like a stall burn kind of deck? Not quite chain burn, because it's actually actively trying to make the game go longer. You'll actually see here. So, we're going to be taking the second turn, opening what looks to be a pretty solid hand here, right? And I saw the opponent set one card and then pass, right? And I'm thinking to myself, okay, so they probably just, like, got a not great opening hand, so... We're going to lead with the water, uh, the right of our Messiah, rather, uh, going for the adventure token. Then I'm going to pitch for Diabelle. Basically, in this situation, I'm actually, like, not really trying to go for a full combo. I'm going to try to lethal in under five summons to play around Nib here. So we got one, two. Going to set the original Sin, then Fateful for the Wandering Griffin Rider. Of course, pitching the Dracoback. Dracoback F to equip, especially in the Wandering Griffin Rider. 
uh, pretty simple adventure stuff. Of course, again, summoning everything in attack mode, because it's turn two. I'm actually gonna bounce the face down card, and then now I can normal summon Junk Servant, and I'm like, cool, this is 8k. Uh, there's nothing on the field, nothing that can stop me, barring like a battle fader or. Oh. <laughs> yeah, here's the beginning of the stall part, the Swift Scarecrow, right? So I'm like, okay, that's actually not that big of a deal because I have Call by uh, in my hand, right? And then they actually just had Battle Fader as well, so I'm like, okay, this is definitely, you know, our opponent's up to something here. I am going to use the Griffin Rider on the Battle Fader. Which will, of course, put me short of lethal, but I think I'd rather just connect the amount of damage I can get in. Alright, so let's see what we got here. 2,500 plus 2,000 plus 15 should leave them at 2k, right? Yeah. Alright, main phase 2, we're going to actually go for place now. Going to OSS away the Dracoback for Jet Synchron, and then sync it with the Adventure Token to go for our Junk Speeder. Uh, we're only getting three tuners here, but that actually doesn't really matter, because... Um, oh, why didn't I summon Jet Synchron? I should have summoned Jet Synchron instead of Assault Synchron, and I could have just tuning for the Assault Synchron and then specialed it, which would have been effectively the same as getting four tuners. Yeah, that was a misplay on my part. Anyway, gonna make the Baron Rev Synchron to summon itself back. Now, the newly level 1 Rev Synchron and the Junk Speeder are gonna sync off for the Stardust Charge Warrior. She'll enable me to draw a card here. I'm basically gonna pretty much end up going for the same turn 1 combo line, though. Um, even without the extra Jet Synchron, I think we should still be able to get there. Yeah, because now we can use these two. Well, technically, I was supposed to activate Illumination first and send off Trail. I don't think it super matters here, because, like, I'm already establishing multiple negates, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's funny, as soon as I say, yeah, I don't think this really matters here, is actually when the opponent concedes, which is kind of funny. Uh, it's almost like they uh, they realized at the same time I did. So, so there we go. Um, there are our games with Adventure Sync on. My first set of games. This was definitely my first foray into this deck, and... Um, Again, I feel the need to remind everyone of that, because I'm sure there's going to be people in the comments, which I actually very much, you know, in general, I always encourage this, but especially for a video like this, uh, if any of you out there are more knowledgeable about Adventure Synchron style decks than I am, definitely feel free to chime in in the comments below. Um, I'm looking for, like, pretty much any info about the build I can get, uh, whether it's builds, lines, tech choices, and what they can do for the deck. Uh, if you've got pointers, I am all ears for them. So, uh, thank you, as always, as ever, for watching these games. Let's go ahead and just move now to our outro. Hey everybody, Hexlex here. Just want to give you a huge thanks for watching all the way to the very end of the video. Uh, believe it or not, that is actually one of the best ways that you can support the channel, is by watching the videos in their entirety. But there are many ways in which you can support the channel if you are so interested. Uh, the names that you're seeing on screen here, I gotta give an extra special thanks to, because these are people who have chosen to either become a member on YouTube, which if you're interested, you can do as well via the join button next to the subscribe button down there uh, or have signed up over on patreon and become members there link to that is going to be in the description below uh, without the support that is being offered by again all the people that you're seeing on screen right here um, I would not be able to take the time to dedicate to uploading daily YouTube videos so thank you thank you so very much but uh, there are also other ways you can support as well um, again link to the description below if you like my deck tracker that you'll see in a lot of my videos the untapped companion you can download that that for free and if you use my affiliate link down there uh, then that also goes a long way towards supporting the channel uh, that's again free so is subscribing here on YouTube that's also free and a huge way to support uh, you can also uh, check out twitch once again linked in the description below following and subscribing over there will not only support as well but also give you notifications of when I go live if you want to catch some of the live streams um, but really no matter how you choose to support uh, it all adds up and it all definitely means the world so thank you each and every one of you uh, for now this is Hexlex I'm gonna be signing out but more than that, I'm hoping that you have a fantastic day.